There was a shift where the idea of working for the industry, in the industry, no longer appealed to me. Instead of getting hired to work on someone else's project, today I'm gonna to show you how you can make your very own animated series right from home. My name is Sebastian. I'm an independent animator, illustrator, and content creator here on YouTube. When working alone, I like to take the entire project episode by episode and split the production into three phases, starting with pre-production. This is more than just a brainstorm phase. It's the blueprint for your entire animated film. It all starts with a simple script and outline. Uh, in writing. Next we have the storyboard with the script uh, appended or fused. And lastly we have the animatic with the final timing and spacing and ideally sound as well. I successfully made the first episode of a series called Chronicle of Pi back in 2022. When I started working on that project I had no script, no storyboard, I just went straight for the animatic. And while that felt good to not let anything hinder me from starting my project and just getting my feet wet, it made visualizing the true scope of this project almost impossible. And starting that way made the production phase take forever. In fact, I was working on that short two minute film for about five years. If I were to do it all over again, I would uh, make a complete outline for a, a given episode, then attach some visuals to those, so like a really rough storyboard. After that, I clean it up and publish, give it a nice uh, polished look. You can do that in this app called Krita. They have a nice storyboarding tool. So now I'll just attach pieces of the script that belong to each visual together. Not only could you turn this into a company if you were pitching your animation project to them, you can also just have this for yourself to know that yes, you are a professional. A storyboard is a professional tool, and by completing this document, you are now a professional. Finally, with that storyboard, I'd iron out the final animatic with the timing and pacing, also the story relevant uh, audio for the production. So I do some rough voice acting just to get the feel of the scene, and that will give me a much clearer picture of what my finished production is going to require. That's why the pre-production is more like a blueprint for your entire project. Once you have that final animatic with sound, you'll really begin to understand what you're getting into. Welcome to the studio. Here I teach 2D animation and drafting for illustration on the Noble Frugal Studio YouTube channel. Minor renovations today featuring Flexispot's premium E7 standing desk. My last desk had a side to side wobble issue while standing, but I'm happy to say that the E7 is sturdy enough to have a distraction free workflow while raised above 40 inches. I chose the white top with the gray frame, some low contrast colors so I can focus more on my monitor. The assembly was straightforward, I've done this before. I had this wired up and standing in one hour, six minutes, and 32 seconds. This desk also features an automatic brake to prevent damage or injury when colliding with objects. It happens, and I'm glad to have this feature. If you need to stop the E7, just give it a bonk. You can check out Flexispot with the link in the description, and don't forget to use the code YTE730 to get $30 off the E7 or the E7 Pro standing desks. Thanks to Flexispot for sponsoring this video. We're heading into production. First, we finalize our voiceovers. We also have the rough animation phase, where we iron down the movement mechanics of our characters, the cleanup, and of course, coloring. For my project, Chronicle of Pi, the rough animation was the absolute funnest part of this entire project. It was also short-lived, perhaps the shortest process on in the entire roadmap. Probably took me as little as six months, maybe a year. Can't remember too well, but the cleanup phase, making those final lines and colors, took me over two years. And that includes finishing drawings that were old and that I couldn't correct. In other words, it was painful. If I were to do it over again, I'd, I'd make a first pass only for the rough animation, a very simple layout sketch. That way during the cleanup phase, I'm still drawing. That way it'll make the cleanup phase a little more challenging, but also more fun, more enjoyable like the rough animation. Coloring is pretty straightforward. We've been doing this since kindergarten. 
Um, I'd still color manually because I do enjoy that process. Just a last note, uh, it's also recommended that if your software has good vector line art tools that you use those because then you'll be able to export your animation in any resolution you'd like and not just the default resolution you set when you started the project. Speaking of exporting, the last destination on our roadmap is post-production. You might imagine that post-production is a sigh of relief. You've finished all the animation of your film, and now you just have to put things together, and you'd be completely wrong. Post-production can be the most stressful part of your entire workflow. Here we have the compositing, so uh, putting all the different layers together in your video editor, adding special effects, and corrections or quality assurance. I didn't really do much compositing. Um, I just did all of that within the software I was using, which is called OpenTunes. It's a free 2D animation software. But the corrections were the most stressful part of this project, hands down. You're going to be watching your film over and over and over again, looking for any mistakes you made. To your surprise, there might be a lot. And when you make a mistake, that means you have to go back in your animation software, fill in that space of empty color, re-render, and place it back in your editor. Tens of hundreds of times. That goes even more the longer your animation production lasts. So if I were to do this again, I would definitely uh, keep my outline, my script, as short as possible so that I can manage a shorter production before I move up to something longer. It's easy to get tunnel vision in this phase. Watch the same thing over and over again. You could be staring right at a glaring mistake and never notice it. So it's good to get a fresh pair of eyes to do some corrections with you so that you can make sure that your quality assurance can meet the level that you're trying to achieve, whether that be professional or independent. Also, if some mistakes do creep in, it's really nothing to be ashamed of. It's likely that no one will really notice, but you don't want that same mistake creeping into your next production. So it's good to take some notes. If I were to do this all again, uh, I think I would export my layers from my animation software uh, separately so I can do some more advanced compositing effects. I think it's time I level up my animations to the theatrical level. You can do that with all free software, so why not? That's the basic roadmap for one episode. And after you've mastered that process, it's a rinse and repeat for each following episode in your series. Not so complicated, huh? There's definitely more to it when you actually get down to producing this, but don't let that discourage you. Actually, the failure of my first animated series is what taught me how to succeed for my new animated productions. Also, one very important thing, give yourself a deadline for this project and don't tell anybody about it. I know it's hard. You want to announce, hey, I started working on this new animated series. Isn't that awesome? But use that anticipation instead to drive you to the finish line, where then you can tell people about it. Otherwise, you could get caught in the countless delays, delays, delays that come naturally with first time animation production. Just a piece of advice. After all, you're the animator. It's your story. I hope it goes well. Well, since you agreed to watch this video, it's time to get started on your series. Seriously, get cooking.